Hey guys, we've been getting a lot of questions on our Facebook and email accounts about the skimmer trigger. So I wanted to take a second and go over those questions and give you guys the same confidence and excitement in the skimmer that we all have here. A couple things about it, it's made from 100% Glock factory parts that are refined and polished by hand. It's a drop-in, carry, non-adjustable trigger. There's no adjustment point, so no room for error there. And then lastly, all three Glock safeties are still functioning the way they should be. With the Glock triggers, if you guys can picture two parts. We've got this first part where the, the pre-travel is, the take-up, all the slack, before you hit that predictable wall. Then the last part, that's where the creep sits. So with the Glock factory trigger, we've got a fair amount of slack, a fair amount of take-up. So what that does is that introduces time for error to occur. You've got more time for your sights to come off target. You've got more time for your, for your body position to change while you're just taking up the slack alone. Then you'll hit that predictable wall. Then you'll decide to finish by taking the rest of the creep out of the trigger to finish the shot. With the skimmer trigger, what we do is we, with the pre-travel reduction mod, reduce the amount of slack, the amount of pre-travel that we have before you hit that predictable wall. And then we've got the creep that has been extremely cleaned up, refined, and polished. So you have a nice, clean break. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna head out to the range. We're gonna do a neuromuscular timing drill to work on trigger manipulation. And then of course, neuromuscular timing and efficiency. So let's head out there. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a deeper dive. What we're going to do today is look at rhythm and how it relates to shooting. So neuromuscular timing is something that we pay attention to in our mental performance fitness centers and our D5 neuro labs. We've got devices in there that allow us to gauge the student, gauge ourselves to a thousandth of a second. Now a thousandth of a second is a very, very fine measurement. So as we're listening to these tones in our mind and we're tapping our hands or we're tapping our feet, we're trying to time our brain to the sound and telling our bodies to move in concert with that time. So we don't always have access to those apps and those instruments, but it's definitely something you can do out here on the range. I've got my iPhone here. I've got a metronome app on it that you can download. There's a bunch of them out on the internet that you can download for free. And what the metronome does, it allows me to hear that tone, allows me to hear that tick, and helps me develop neuromuscular timing as it relates to this, trigger manipulation. So that's what we're doing today. All right, I understand that not everyone out there is musicians, but I'm gonna break this down really simply right now. Everyone looks at their watch for me, they could see that there's 60 seconds in a minute. So if you were to tick your fingers every time that goes off, that's roughly 60 beats a minute. So that's just a rough explanation when you guys go to use your metronome app. You can establish whatever speed baseline that works for you. The last I left off, I had it at 76 beats a minute, so we're gonna start there. This is 76 beats a minute with eight notes. So everyone just listen to this tone. What we're going to do is we're going to start to count. This is going to be on the top left-hand circle with this first go-round, this first time. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot just that on the main numbers, trying to keep my mind and my trigger control, my, my trigger manipulation dialed into this tone. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,001, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, All right, so continuing on to the next circle, we're going to keep the same tone. One and two and three and four and five. One and two and three and four and five and two and three and four and five. Moving on to the next circle. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then finally, on the last one, this is the greatest speed, this is the fastest one. What does everyone tend to do when they go fast? They really get slappy on the trigger. They really start to open up because they think faster means harder. Absolutely not the case. That's the time when you need to dial in your trigger manipulation as best as possible, staying on top of it. Keeping the pad of your trigger finger on the face of that trigger the entire time. One, two, three, four, five. 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 
All right, so again, as we start to speed up, that's when we find a lot of folks begin to become impulsive. The secret to success in this drill, the absolute secret in success, I cannot stress it enough, is just simply counting out loud. Just counting out loud to the sound of this metronome. As you're counting out loud, it's telling the brain, this is what I'm doing, this is the rhythm, this is the speed that I'm doing it in. There's rhythm in everything that we do. We talk in a rhythm, we walk in a rhythm. Most everyone loves music, even though they may not be musicians, but rhythm is absolutely everywhere. So what we're trying to do now is dial it in and bring it to this world of trigger manipulation and neuromuscular timing. All right, that was a high level view of a neuromuscular timing drill, something that we do in our D5 classes. We also cleared up a lot of the questions out there on that skimmer trigger. We look forward to seeing you at some of our future classes. I'm Nate LeCompte. Stay sharp and be safe.